I don't really know what I'm doing here, so okay. we'll see how this goes. You have your my your, fiddle stick. Your fiddle stick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do an intro. You're gonna tell everybody who you are because they've probably seen you in the last couple of videos, but they don't know who you are. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah from Ugly Duckling House, and today this is Kyle. Well, not just today, but most days, <laughs> he's still Kyle. Sorry, I've got a cough drop because I'm not feeling well. I thought it was important to bring him on because we've been doing these last few videos of Rupee's Revival without him and explaining all the voiceover stuff. I thought it would be much more important to get his perspective. It is his grandfather's old camper that we're renovating. He is a huge component of why we're even doing this project in the first place. You guys may have noticed that there's been a little bit of a break in between these last four videos that came out and then nothing for a really long time. And sorry about that, we genuinely are. And it's not that we don't intend on sharing more videos. It's just that in between, there has been um, a panini and, uh, and we had a baby in between. As you'll see at the end of the video, we actually did a cute little reveal when we were working on it to show our friends and family that we were expecting. And we also lost Charlie. Yeah. Um, so you guys are gonna be seeing some footage of her, but she is unfortunately no longer with us. We have a big blog post dedicated to her on the blog if you guys wanna read over her about her life. We love her so much and we miss her every day. We're reminiscing a little bit as we're re-watching some of this footage because she was with us through almost every project we ever did. I'll let Kyle do most of the explainer in today's video which is all about polishing. Hey guys, I'm Kyle. A little bit of background for me. I started out in electrical engineering, I moved on to industrial design, and now I spend most of my time in project management. If you've ever looked at the CAD files that Sarah has on her website, that's, that's me. Now's his turn to be kind of the person on camera and uh, please give him some support because it is difficult to do this. Onto the video, we're gonna try and explain as best we can as we go through this. Since this is his first time doing it, I'm gonna try and include the rest of the supplemental information on the blog at uglyducklinghouse.com. So if there's additional questions that this video did not answer, go there first and we're happy to answer. Please leave comments and subscribe if you like this series. We are so excited to be back and sharing more videos. In the last video, you guys were seeing that we did a pressure wash and we kind of experimented a little bit with some aluminum polish. And we got really incredibly great results from that. And to my shock, I did not expect to get such good results. So we kind of wondered what would the rest of the camper look like if we just continued on? So that's kind of what we did. We didn't expect that this is gonna be the final polish or anything like that, but we were just excited and ready to see what happens next. We're just testing out to see if it gets rid of the rest, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. That's working for that too. Okay, so we got a plan. After some sanding, because we still have some gouges that we have to Stuff that's etched in. Yeah. Not all of that might come out. There's like residue or scratchiness. Still. Yeah. That makes me happy. Yeah. Gotta figure out what to do about the scratch parts. Sand. What we want everyone to understand is that this was just a trial polish. It was never the intention for this to be the final product. We just wanted to do a quick polish of the entire camper, get an idea of what the skin looked like, you know, were there a lot of scratches, were there a lot of dings, were there things that we couldn't see under the oxidation. Because this is definitely not going to last. We just kind of knew going forward that there was a good chance that this would oxidize again. It wasn't going to look as shiny as it did. In the meantime, we learned a lot about polishing. We stuck to battery operated stuff mainly because we were on a separate lot that had no power. So yeah. we had no choice but to do that or buy a generator. So the, the quickest option was to just buy a battery powered polish. We in fact did experiments with two different polishes and we found that they were relatively the same results but we had better success with the, with the blue one. And, and it was the smell. The smell too. We, I remember right. the smaller container had just this. There's a, there was a mother's smell. polish, yeah, right? Yeah, mother's yeah. something, and that was the one that we decided not to go with. We went with the yeah. other one that had that's a blue tint. When you take it, when you look at the product itself. As we started, we did a little bit of a competition. We didn't realize it was happening as we first started doing. I won. Yes, you did. As far as speed goes, hers was actually a better quality polish, but 
Thank you. We don't, we don't need to get into that. The first step, we have our battery powered polisher and then you have a polishing net that wraps around the, um, the buffing pad. On that polishing net, we would apply just maybe a tablespoon of the polish that we decided to use and then smear, 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 and then run the buffer up and down, up and down, up and down until we're done with our section. Now we started this and we would do it in smaller sections so it just wasn't so overwhelming. If we tried to do the entire side at once, felt like it would take hours. This way, you know, it wasn't so monotonous and we got to see a little bit of progress slowly at a time. And that seems to be the way that they recommend doing most of the polishing anyway. Do it, it in is. small sections so yeah. it's manageable. We didn't really waste any time in between applying the aluminum polish and then removing it right back off. Once we apply the first coat of polish, we then have to come back with a clean buffing pad and buff it in. So it, it's a lot like polishing a car. It's normal for this aluminum polish to turn black. It's actually part of the chemical process. We started on the left side or the right side, depending on how you look at the camper. We started on one side. We had one process for that side. And then as we moved over to the opposite side, you can see that the process changed up a little bit. This is us just trying to figure out what worked the best. And also I kind of abandoned him halfway through this polishing process. She did. But for a good reason. Yeah. I in fact was doing all the demo work on the interior, which you're gonna see in the next video. So if you haven't subscribed already that is an epically awesome video i love demo and it is so much fun to rip all this stuff out and we in fact kept some pieces because in the future i'm going to be using it in a future project some of the leftover wood you guys will get a chance to actually have some of it yourselves yeah. but more on that later i'll say as far as the different processes go and the different steps that we took they all had the same result whether i went up and down side to side vertically the result is the same as long as you follow the same three-step process of apply your polish then apply your clean buffing pad and buff it in and then apply a third buffing pad and buff it in a little bit more and we wound up having quite a, going through quite a lot of pads you'll wind up having to get a secondary order of polishing or buffing pads and we were able to wash them in the wash right we still use them now for everyday tasks the buffing cloths yeah. not the the polishing pads we yeah, don't we, need for I, I use those to dry off still they're good because they fit around my hand and i can just really oh, yeah yeah they're awesome <laughs> okay i yeah. didn't know that yeah there's one in the bedroom right now <laughs> When we did there was the, the, the fuzzy ones, yeah. there were the fuzzy ones and then the, the cloths themselves are more of a microfiber cloth. The microfiber cloth was the one that we found the best result with. Originally when we did the one section we tried sheep's wool cloth and that didn't work out well. You polish until the, the black residue is no longer yeah. on the aluminum. Like that's when you know that you're done. The sheep's wool absorbs so much of the polishing paste. Mm -hmm. that it absorbed into the wool and didn't apply itself to the aluminum. Maybe someone else has a way around that, but... Yeah, leave a comment if you've done this Absolutely. before. We welcome all the rest of the tips before we do the next polishing off. Speaking of the next polishing, so the next step, now that we've done our original polish, we are able to see where all the imperfections, where we have rust lines or branch lines, because it did sit in the woods for 30 years, so trees fell on it, and my father was not the most gentle man with the camper. There is some good news coming that we are picking this project back up again because we've decided basically to put all of our house projects aside as much as possible other than the various home repairs that we have to do whenever they pop up. We are basically whole assing the Ruby's Revival project over the next six months. Our goal is to try and actually get it to where we can start traveling in it as soon as possible. We've got a plan all in place and that's thanks to this guy because I'm not much of a planner. 46 step plan. And the next polishing is going to be, what step? 24th. Circling back around to why we did this original polish, we just wanted to get an idea of the damage and whether the panels, the, the aluminum panels are actually usable. How many do we have to replace? As it turns out, we're pretty lucky in that aspect and we only have to replace maybe one or two panels. Next step, First we replace those panels and then we'll go through and we'll sand down anything that we need to. More than likely we'll sand the entire shell with a really high grit sand just to get rid of some of the harder indentions, the deeper scrapes and cuts and things along those lines. And then we'll do the final professional polish. All right, so that concludes this video. I just wanted to say thank you guys for being so patient and waiting for the next video. I know that it has been a long time coming, so I don't want to keep you waiting that long until the next one comes. So I've already got that one prepared and I've scheduled it for next week, seven days from now, so that there's going to be another video and it's going to be all about the demo work I did on the inside. We are still currently brainstorming what we're going to do to try and help support this project. We 
haven't really figured out if we're going to put a Patreon up or something like that and offer you guys some exclusive content, but that's also on the table. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do so so that we can see that you guys want more of these videos and hit the notifications bell so that you guys get a notification as soon as that video drops. And if you don't want to do that, then just set your timers for seven days from now and you'll see the video go live. In the future, we're going to be putting out videos way more often, so you won't want to miss a single minute. And until next time, I'll see you later. Hey guys, I'm Kyle. I know it's hard. It is. You're doing fine. We'll just jump right into the video and... <laughs> <laughs> you completely threw me off with a smile. Because sometimes he's like... Oh, the, the... The one that you get caught in our in our family photos. Oh, I never do it intentionally, it just turns out that way. But, <laughs> no. Yeah. I look like I've been punched, that's the smile I have. You have a very shocked look on your face. Like you're surprised, like you just woke up from a dream and then all of a sudden you're... In front of a camera. In front of a camera <laughs> with a child and man you've never met before.